New York City, the largest city in the United States and the city with the most extensive public transport system. But it wasn't always this way. Join me as we'll take a look at the history of the public transport system of the Big Apple and the plans for its future development. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. New York City began its life on the southern tip of Manhattan as New Amsterdam in the year 1625. The Dutch West India Company set it up as a fortress to protect the fur trade in the New World. At this time, the colony was tiny and every destination was reachable with a short walk. When the colony started spreading to the surrounding islands and peninsulas, a need for maritime transport was created. This demand spurred the establishment of ferry services across New York's numerous waterways. In 1664, New Amsterdam was taken over by England, and in 1669, the Treaty of Breda was signed. This gave New Amsterdam to the English, and in return, the Dutch got Suriname, a colony in South America. Some time later, the Dutch recaptured New York and renamed it to New Orange. In the end, the Warring States signed the Treaty of Westminster in 1674 and ended the conflict. This treaty gave final control over New York to the English. After this treaty, the city got renamed to New York. Not much is known about this early history of transportation in the city, aside from the fact that most people had to walk everywhere or take a boat. The very rich had access to horse-drawn carriages, but most people had to walk. Let's jump forward to the 19th century, where the real development began. In the year 1811, the famous grid system was established in Manhattan. This was the beginning of the iconic street names such as the East 17th Street, East 20th Street and of course you can't forget the iconic East 25th Street. 1827 saw the birth of the first mass transit system with the establishment of the first omnibus lines. An omnibus is a horse-drawn carriage intended for mass transit usage. These sprung up in every developed city across the world, like London or Berlin. I've actually made a video about the history of Berlin's public transport system, so if you'd find that video interesting, go click the link in the card in the top right corner. In 1832, someone in the New York and Harlem Railroad Company got the brilliant idea of putting horse-drawn carriages on rails, allowing people to get between the Lower East Side and Union Square faster. The New York and Harlem Railroad Company wanted to, quite fittingly, build a streetcar line between New York, which was just Lower Manhattan back then, and Harlem, in which they eventually succeeded. In 1837, the New York and Harlem Railroad started using steam power on its railway. This development caused pushback from the local residents and in 1854, the Common Council banned the railroad from using steam power below 42nd Street. Some time later, in 1847, Long Island got connected to the city with the New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad. In the 1870s, these were consolidated into today's Long Island Railroad or LIRR. In 1868, the first elevated railway in the city, the West Side and Yonkers Patent Railway, had its first successful test run. This new railway concept used underground steam engines every 1500 feet along the route to propel the cars. This means that it was more like a grounded funicular than a standard train. These railways, also known as L's, are the source behind the famous Chicago L name. Unfortunately, due to delays, the first paying passengers rode the railway on the 14th of February 1870. In the same year, this beautiful man, Alfred Eli Beach, set up America's first subway. Unlike today's subways, which are either powered by third rails or overhead wires, Beach's subway was powered by steam-powered fans, which then propelled the train cars using compressed air. This could be considered as an early version of the Hyperloop, proving yet again that Elon Musk isn't the inventor that his Reddit army thinks he is. Beach's subway closed three years later, in 1873, due to a lack of funding after a stock market crash known as the Panic of 1873. In 1872, the first successful elevated train line was completed, running from the 9th Avenue in Lower Manhattan to Harlem. Elevated railways were the most popular public transit method, but they were by no means perfect. This was especially clear after the Great Blizzard of 1888, which paralyzed the city's rail lines. The blizzard renewed a push for underground railways, and in 1904, the first modern subway in New York City was opened. 
The first subway line ran from City Hall in Lower Manhattan to Grand Central Terminal in Midtown and then it continued west along 42nd Street to Times Square. At last, it made its way to Harlem in the north. At this time, the subway wasn't operated by the MTA but rather by private companies. The first line was built by the Interborough Rapid Transit Company, but more soon followed. In 1905, the subway reached the Bronx. Brooklyn was covered in 1908 and Queens was reached by 1915. Staten Island is still waiting for a proper subway, but its needs are currently being served by the Staten Island Railway. Gasoline-powered buses also entered the scene in 1905, competing with steam-powered streetcars. Three years later, in 1908, the railways that are now the Port Authority Trans-Hudson, or PATH, opened. In 1909, all five bars got electric streetcars, boosting their efficiency and stopping their reliance on steam power. In 1913, the last station on the path was opened. After the massive success of the subway, more companies wanted a slice of the public transport pie. In 1915, the Interborough Rapid Transit Company got itself some competition with the construction of a subway line connecting Brooklyn and Manhattan, completed by the fittingly named Brooklyn Rapid Transit Company. This competition is also the reason behind why some lines are labeled with letters and some with numbers. This was to differentiate between services of different companies. The network continued to grow and in 1924, the Interborough Rapid Transit subway system quadrupled its number of stations, just 20 years after opening its first line. In 1929, a plan called the Second System was proposed. The proposal called for the building of over 100 miles or 160 kilometers of new subway tracks. Everything was all fine and dandy until the stock market had a bit of a moment later that year. The plan was mostly scrapped with only the lines under construction during that time moving forward. In 1932, the city opened its independent rapid transit railroad or IND, a city-owned competitor to the two private subway systems. Just eight years later, in 1940, the city government bought off the two private companies' systems and merged them with the IND, ultimately creating one unified subway system. A year later, in 1941, the US officially entered World War II. The subway and the public transportation system as a whole were crucial in getting workers to the factories and shipyards needed to win the war. Rail transport also benefited from rations on oil and rubber that were put in place during that time. After 1945, rationing ended and the US found itself in a new age of prosperity. Unfortunately, this prosperity didn't carry over to the public transportation system. At first, elevated rail lines were torn down in favor of different modes of transport. Then, an era of deferred maintenance began, allowing a lot of the transit system's infrastructure to fall into disrepair. At last, General Motors, Mack Trucks, Standard Oil of California and other automobile interests conspired to tear up streetcar lines and replace them with buses and automobiles, due to those being cheaper than maintaining rails and to boost profits. This narrative of cars being the transport method of the future was pushed heavily by General Motors, as shown in this 1954 promotional movie called Give Yourself the Green Light. As a consequence, New York City's electric streetcar system was gradually torn up with the last line closing in 1957. With the rise of freeways and with them crippling traffic, some people thought about bypassing the traffic with helicopters. In 1953, New York Airways, a helicopter airline, took its first flight. The airline flew passengers between New York's airports as well as destinations like the Pan Am Building or the East River Downtown Heliport. In 1965, public transport was consolidated under the umbrella of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, better known as the MTA. The last elevated rail line closed in 1973, leaving the city with only buses, commuter rail and a subway for mass transit service. In 1979, the New York Airways helicopter airline filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, ending scheduled helicopter flights in the city. This bankruptcy was caused by the 1973 and 1979 oil crises, which caused the price of fuel to climb dramatically. Another reason was the slowing economy during the 70s. New York City saw a massive increase in crime rates during the 70s and 80s and combined with the general disrepair of the system, ridership fell dramatically. 
In the mid to late 80s, investments in the system were finally made and combined with the falling crime rates and the improving economy, ridership ticked up again. In 1983, the Metro North Railroad was set up, connecting Connecticut to New York. The transit situation was improving throughout the late 80s and early 90s until the mayoral election of 1993. In this election, Rudy Giuliani was elected to the post of mayor of New York City. Just a year later, Giuliani cut the MTA budget by $400 million, combined with more budget cuts from the state. The public transport system moved on from tokens in favor of the Metro card, a magnetic stripe payment card in 1993. Tokens were fully phased out in 2003. Everything chugged along until the September 11th attacks, after which public transportation services ground to a halt for safety reasons. Subway tunnels and stations underneath and near the site were severely damaged. The tunnels and stations were slowly rebuilt, with some, like Cortland Street Station, being reopened 17 years later in 2018. The 2000s saw increases in ridership and expansions to the system. The economy was booming and there was plenty of money for projects. That continued until the stock market had another moment in 2008 and the economy nosediving with it. Drops in real estate and corporate tax revenues plunged the MTA into a $1.3 billion deficit and the agency faced fair increases in budget cuts. The system saw temporary closures in 2012 due to Hurricane Sandy. In 2017, the latest subway line opened, called the Second Avenue Line. In 2019, the One Metro New York, or Omni contactless cards, started to be rolled out across the city. These work by tapping the card at the barrier, removing the need for card swipes. Metro card is supposed to be phased out in favor of Omni, but the date is currently up in the air. In 2020, transit ridership took a sharp dive in the COVID-19 pandemic due to the lockdowns and people working from home. Ridership has still not fully recovered. The latest development in the city's transit system are proposed EV toll flights. EV toll, standing for Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing, are small battery-powered aircraft. These are capable of landing and taking off vertically, like a helicopter. Numerous companies are trying to get FAA certification to operate regular EV toll flights, like Joby Aviation, Blade, Eve Air Mobility, and others. These companies are trying to operate like the helicopter airlines of the past, except with quieter and more economical aircraft. The first test flights have already been completed, and regularly scheduled service is scheduled to start in 2026. We'll have to wait and see to find out how this new technology holds up in the real world. In conclusion, New York City relies on subways, buses, and commuter rail lines to move millions of people every day without relying on private automobiles. Thank you so, so much for watching, hope you enjoyed this longer video, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next week, bye!